the Academy Award winning movie Amadeus, which happens to be my most favorite movie of all time, portrays the lives and the careers of the composers Antonio Salieri and Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart. Now Salieri was born in a very small town to a very poor family, but nevertheless, he was deeply religious. From a young age, he dreamed of being a great composer who wanted nothing more than to compose great music for the glory of God. And he, that's what he, he set out to do, and that's what he did. And he did achieve some success. He rose to be the, the court composer of King Joseph of Austria. And if you listen to classical music regularly, you can still hear some of his music played every once in a while. On the other hand, Mozart was a child prodigy and is considered by many to be the greatest composer of all times. His music is legendary and it's recognized by even the most casual listener, people who don't normally listen to classical music. Yet Mozart was a crude and vulgar man who apparently made little room for God in his life. In the eyes of Salieri, he even mocked God. But because he was always living in the shadow of Mozart, Salieri was consumed with jealousy and became very angry with God. All he wanted to do was please God with his music, but he had limited success. He never, never was much more than average. Yet the profane and irreverent Mozart was rewarded by God with his enormous talent and ability. And as a result, Salieri blamed God for his shortcomings. And he championed himself as the patron saint of the mediocres. You know, the truth of the matter is, God never intended for you to live a mediocre, average life. So many times we just think, we're, we're, we're nobody, we're just average. God, that's not what God intended from forever. You are designed for excellence. You are uniquely created. Stop and think about it for a minute. There's nobody else in the world exactly like you. You are unique. Sometimes we think about unique people, we say he's one in a million. Well, you're much more than one in a million. You're one in about six billion so why do we settle for mediocrity? Why do we settle for being average? Everybody wants to be recognized in one way or another. In fact, not only do you want to be recognized, you need to be recognized for your own emotional health and image. This is a natural instinct that we're born with. You go to any playground or park and listen to how many times you'll hear a kid cry out, Watch me, Daddy! Watch me, Mommy. Craving for that attention. We all want to stand out from the crowd and be recognized. Even as adults, we want to be recognized. And we don't do it quite as blatantly as the kids do. But we do it. Some people will do it by the way, the car they drive, by the house they live in. But they, they, we're always wanting to stand out. Well, this morning, our text is going to do just exactly that as it talks of a individual that stood out from the crowd. The first nine chapters of First Chronicles consist of genealogies with a listing of more than 600 names. But right in the middle of all these names, God singles out one man for special recognition, and his name is Jabez. If you're not already there, turn to First Chronicles chapter 4, verses 9 to 10, and read with me. And Jabez was more honorable than his brothers, and his mother named him Jabez, saying, Because I bore him with pain. Now Jabez called on the God of Israel, saying, Oh, that thou would bless me indeed, and enlarge my border, and that thy hand might be with me, and that thou wouldst keep me from harm, so that it may not pain me. And God granted him what he requested. These are the only two verses in the entire Bible that refer to Jabez. Yet he's given an honorable mention above over 600 other people right here in these first chapters of First Chronicles and over thousands more. Why did God single out this man? What did he do that caused his name to be preserved for over 4,000 years? What is it that made Jabez above average? 
We really don't know much about Jabez. All we're told is that, it was that Jabez was more honorable than his brothers. His mother named him Jabez, which by the word is the Hebrew word for pain, because she bore him in pain. He prayed to God, and God answered his prayer. That's all we know. But yet we're still talking about this unique individual all these years later. This, this is an individual who lived a life that was anything but mediocre. And I think we can find in this, in this prayer of his that there we find three principles to make his life above average. These principles can make your, love, your life above average too. Well, while all his friends were content with being average and mediocre. That wasn't enough for Jabez. He prayed for God to bless him. He wanted to do something significant with his life for God. He didn't want to be ordinary in the least. He didn't want to be common. He wanted to expand and grow. Listen to his prayer again. Oh, that thou would bless me indeed and enlarge my border. Jabez had a great ambition. And most of all, he deeply wanted God's blessing upon his life. Many people today just simply drift through life. They have no goals, no master plan. They have no purpose. They have no ambition. As a result, they never accomplish very much. They just simply exist. And that teaches us that the first principle of overcoming mediocrity is you need a great ambition. You need a dream. If you don't have a dream, you're drifting. When you stop dreaming, you lose direction. When you stop setting goals, you stop growing. You must have something that you're pushing toward. As long as your horizon is expanding, you will always be an emotionally healthy human being. God made you for growth. He wants you to stretch and develop and dream. God has a purpose for your life, and your key to success is to discover that purpose and to fulfill it. God never intended for you to go through life with a half-hearted attitude, wondering what you're doing and where you're going. God wants you to have a great ambition in life rather than just going through the motions. But we have to be careful. We find there are three misconceptions that can keep us from having a great ambition. That first misconception is, is that we confuse fear with humility. We tend to say, oh, I could never do that. And we think we're being humble. But that's not humility. That's fear. And fear is nothing more than a lack of faith. And a truly humble person would say, with God's help, I can do it. With God's blessing, I will do it. I can't do it on my own, but with God, I will do it. That's true humility. Second misconception is we tend to confuse laziness with contentment. Now, it is true that Paul did say in Ephesians 4.11, I have learned to be content in the, whatever the circumstances. But that doesn't mean that you shouldn't set any goals. Paul's not teaching us to not set goals or to not have ambitions or to have not have any future desires. He was saying that while his goals have not yet been realized, he had learned to enjoy every day to the fullest. If contentment were a valid excuse for laziness, who would ever feel, feed the poor? Who would ever do anything about world hunger or inequality or justice? How would anybody ever get an education? I mean, a typical kid would say, I'm perfectly content with the third grade. Who needs the fourth grade? You know, we must not confuse laziness with contentment. Thirdly, we have a tendency to confuse small thinking with spirituality. Many people seem proud to say, I serve God in my own little way. And when they say that, I, you know what I want to ask them? Why don't you start serving God in a bigger way? Other people say, well, that's just the way God made me. That's just the way I am. Folks, it's wrong to blame God for our lack of growth and our lack of ambition. He has given us all the tools and abilities and ideas that we need in order to grow. Don't confuse small thinking with spirituality. So it all begins 
with li of, the, of living beyond a bi of mediocrity begins by having a great ambition. The second principle for living above average is that you need a growing faith. Not only did J Jabez have great ambition, he also had a growing faith. He had a deep trust and belief in God. He had enough faith to pray and expect an answer. The missionary of old, William Carey, said, attempt great things for God, expect great things from God. That's exactly, that, 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 we need to live by that. The Bible made, made absolutely no mention of Jabez having any special ability or talent or gift. The, the Bible didn't say he was wealthy or educated. He was simply a common man who apparently had an uncommon faith. Listen, church, you don't need to worry about everything you don't have if you do have faith. Listen, did you hear me? You don't have to worry about everything you don't have if you do have faith. God will give you the necessary power. God loves to use common, ordinary people who fully believe in Him, who are willing to trust Him completely and equip them to succeed. 2 Chronicles 16.9 says, For the eyes of the Lord range to and fro throughout the earth, looking to strengthen those whose hearts are fully committed to Him. That's what God wants to do. Jabez's faith caused him to believe that God would help him with his goals and his dreams. There's something more important than ability talent or education and that something is faith it is believing that God will work through you there are many super talented uh, people who are sitting on the sidelines while ordinary people with great faith are scoring the touchdowns they believe and trust God and God uses them like Jabez they're just ordinary people with extraordinary faith now, apparently, based on his name, Jabez had some type of handicap or disability. As I mentioned earlier, in the Hebrew language, Jabez means painful. Jabez caused his mother so much grief during her childbirth that she named him painful. How would you like to be walk around with a name like painful? Well, look, here comes old painful. Oh, painful's at it again. Yeah, I, I don't know what was going on. He, maybe he was unwanted. Maybe he was unloved. We don't know, but we do know he, his mother named him Jabez. And he, his name constantly reminded him that even his birth caused grief in someone else's life. But Jabez's faith was stronger than his handicap. His faith kept him going. Regardless of his past experiences, Jabez had the faith to look ahead and attempt great things in the future for God. What is your handicap? Is it something physical? Is it spiritual? Maybe you had an unhappy childhood. Is it a frustrating job, a broken marriage? Whatever it may be, are you letting that get in the way of your trust and faith in God? Is your faith strong enough to look ahead and attempt great things for God as Jabez did? We need to remember the words that Jesus told us when he said, All things are possible to him who believes. You need great ambition. You need growing faith. But the third principle we need to overcoming me mediocrity is you need a genuine prayer life. It was Jabez's simple prayer that got him an honorable mention in the Bible. Lots of people pray without ever rising above average, and maybe you're one of them. Maybe you have hesitated in the past to ask for things in prayer. Maybe you felt your request was being selfish. The life of Jabez illustrates three things that we can ask God for and expect Him to answer. The first thing that Jabez prayed for was God's power in his life. He asked for a power that was greater than his own to accomplish his dream. He said, God, 
I want you to bless me. I want your power in my life. Note that it's important that Jabez's request was most specific. He said, I want you to bless me and enlarge my territory. Let me ask you, church, do you pray about your goals? Do you pray about your dreams? Do you ask God to help you wherever you're headed in your life? Now, at first glance, praying like Jabez seems selfish, doesn't it? But there is nothing wrong with praying specifically for what you want, as long as you submit your will to God's will. Jesus did. You remember his prayer in the Garden of Gethsemane just minutes before he was arrested? Father, if it's possible, let this cup pass from me. Yet not as I will, but as thou wilt. Church ambition is neither good nor bad. It's just a basic drive in life. Everyone has some ambition. It may be great. It may be small, but everybody has some ambition. What makes ambition good or bad is the motive that's behind it. Jabez's motives were genuine. And we know that because ne God never honors an unworthy request. God encourages us to ask for and to pray for specific things. James 4, 2 says, you have not because you ask not. God said to Jeremiah in Jeremiah 33, 3, call unto me and I will answer you and tell you great and unsearchable things that you do not know. And the Apostle Paul reminds us in Ephesians that God is able to do immeasurably more than all we ask or imagine according to his power that is at work within us. Jabez prayed for God's power in his life. Secondly, Jabez prayed for God's presence in his life. He said, let your hand be with me. Jabez realized that what he needed was God's help in his life. So he requested God to be with him. That's what we all need. And when you ask for God's presence in your life, you can be sure he will answer. God has said, I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. Pray for God's presence in your life. Third thing Jabez prayed for was God's protection over his life. He said that thou wouldst keep me from harm that it will not pain me. Jabez asked God for his protection. He knew that protection only comes from God. So many times we depend on so many other things. Sometimes we think about, we, we, we pray about what we can do, our own strength. We pray about our own abilities, our own possessions. We rely on, on, on other people to take care of us. We rely on the government. But all protection only comes from God. And the greater we make a stand for God, the greater we're going to need protection from God. Listen to the way... Psalmist said it in Psalms 20, some trust in chariots, some trust in horses, but we trust in the name of the Lord, our God. Jabez prayed for God's power in his life. He prayed for God's presence in his life. He prayed for God's protection over his life. It may well be today more than any other day in our life, that we need to earnestly pray like Jabez. We are surrounded by evil, violence, debauchery, intolerance, and hatred that we've never experienced before. We're being told that what is good is now evil. And what is evil is now being championed. All around the world, and even in our own land, we hear, we're being, we hear wars and rumors of wars, and we're experiencing natural disasters, famines, and diseases. We see a great falling away of the masses from the teachings of Jesus through the church. But Jesus said all of these things are just the beginnings of the labor pains, which will lead to the return of Jesus, our Messiah. Church, I believe it now, today, is we need to pray for God's power, God's presence, and God's protection in our life.
more than ever before. Truth of the matter is, God never intended for you to live a common, average, or mediocre life. He created and designed you for greatness in His kingdom and for His glory. You may never be famous in the eyes of the world. You may never reach celebrity status. You may never have your picture on the cover of magazines. Yet, just like Jabez, you can be more honorable than your brothers and rise to a level of greatness in the kingdom of God. You overcome mediocrity by great ambition, growing faith, and genuine prayer. These are the secrets to living a life that is great in the eyes of God. Great ambition, a growing faith, and genuine prayer. Will you bow your heads? Lord, we pray for your power, your presence, your protection. Lord, we pray that you will bless us. Increase our faith and our awareness of your presence. Watch over and keep us. Lord Jesus, we need you. And we pray that you will come and walk among us. In the quietness of this moment, I simply ask you to pray. Pray like Jabez. You may want to come to the altar. If so, come now. You may want to just turn around and just kneel at your chair and make an altar there. But pray.